Baby, be in love with your fantasies. I can be a star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, YouTube? It's your girl, Asia. And it's your boy, BJ. And, and we, we back, back like we, we never left. left. We appreciate y'all for another pull-up session. Yeah. We're going to be jumping into uh, this video about Margaret Sanger. Uh, now, she's mm. like more of, of what? She's the founder of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Yes. Yep. And I kind of wanted to check out this video. The title of it is Racism, Eugenics, and Hatred. Uh, the truth behind Planned Parenthood founder, Margaret Sanger. Oh, I know this is probably going to spark some emotions. <laughs> I already know. Like, I was, what I've heard about Margaret Sanger, I don't know, like, everything. I, don't, I, I won't say that. But there's been some things that I've read, like, here and there over a time span. And it it's never been anything really positive. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'll stop there. It yeah. just... She she probably triggers a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah, I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready <laughs> okay, to check I'm it like, out. I'm waiting on you to say something else. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's jump into it. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's jump into this video. I'm ready. Here we go. As founder of the American Birth Control League, which <clears> later <throat> became Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger was no doubt a controversial figure with disturbing views on eugenics, race, and population control. Mm. While some argue she even wanted to exterminate the black race, others are trying to erase that part of her past. The Mike Wallace interview. In the eyes of some, Margaret Sanger has been a heroine. In the eyes of others, she's been a destructive force. In her own words, Sanger pushed for a society that limited births to those she deemed fit to have children. Well, I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world that have disease from their parents that have no chance in the world to be a human being, practically. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mock when they're born. In 1916, Sanger opened the country's first birth control clinic. As a member of the American Eugenics Society, she advocated improving the genetic composition of humans through controlled reproduction of different races and classes. She often wrote about the issue in the journal she founded, called the Birth Control Review. In 1919, writing, I personally believe in the sterilization of the feeble-minded, the insane, and the syphilitic. The most urgent problem today is how to limit and discourage the over-fertility of the mentally and physically defective. Many point to a 1923 New York Times interview as proof of Sanger's racist motives, in which she referred to people as weeds, saying, it means the release and cultivation of the better racial elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extirpation of defective stocks, those human weeds which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. That right there, that statement right there, that right there definitely hits kind of heavy right there. Just, just, just listening to like her words read over. Mm-hmm. It hits, it hits me the wrong way. Yeah. I feel like, too, you know... That's kind of hit, hit me the wrong way. April the 8th? Uh, 1923, mm -hmm. it looks like. Yeah. ...which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. What are Hayden finest flowers? Ludwig, an investigative researcher, has extensively studied Sanger's life and writings. She talked about the need for race betterment through, through controlling these weeds, basically undesirable people. In 1939, after opening another clinic in Harlem, the birth control activist launched... In Harlem. She opened it in Harlem. Yeah. ...the Negro Project, an initiative supported by black leaders, such as civil rights activist W.E.B. Du Bois. Critics claim the program mm. used the pretense of better health and family planning for poor blacks in the South as an attempt to limit the black race. Ludwig says some on the left grapple with Sanger's past, and how to interpret her legacy. They know, when she writes about human weeds, they, they know that, it's, that it's, it's repulsive. They know it's disgusting. The left will never abandon Margaret Sanger because if they do, the, she's the foundation of so many of their views. Sanger once shared her vision for a preferred race at a women's branch of the Ku Klux Klan, writing in her autobiography, Always, to me, any aroused group was a good group. 
Despite those views, liberals praise Sanger's work while ignoring her history. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously. Her courage, her tenacity, her vision. I am really in awe of her. Ryan Bomberger, founder of the... How? How could you be, though? How could you be, though? That's the first time I've ever heard Hillary say that. He even said her vision. Right. That means right. that means that you you fully Man. understand mm -hmm. you fully understand her agenda in regards to what, what what you know what she's getting at and what she's trying to do in regards to just eliminating what she what what she deems people to be defective to American society or not really you know are going to be <clears throat> contributors to what the society is supposed to be what that what that the flowers of the what American that vision is of the American to be. civilization yeah. Man wow that's that's cold right Radiance Foundation says abortion proponents are working to clean up Sanger's past and what she stood for. They have to reinvent her every time they talk about her in order to justify their celebration of her. Former Planned Parenthood director Abby Johnson says those inside the abortion industry are trained to overlook Sanger's racist views. They give you an answer like, well, I mean, yes. Former Margaret director. Sanger was was a racist, but everybody was a racist back then. You accept it because she is your hero. And she has to be your hero. You cannot question Planned Parenthood. In 1997, Stephen Mosher of the Population Research Institute wrote about the push to repackage Margaret Sanger in the Wall Street Journal. The reason I call it the repackaging of Margaret Sanger is because after uh, the Nazi regime destroyed the legitimacy of eugenics forever, uh, they then went back and said, oh, she was just an early uh, feminist. She was just an early supporter of, of family planning. No, she wasn't. No. You know what? When they start talking about the eugenics and they start going into like how she's trying to like control like the population regarding like certain classes or certain races the first thing i thought of was, was hitler yeah as far as like that mindset mm. as far as trying to control a certain population because, because we know what hitler did yeah i so know that's it's almost like the same type of ideology only it's not as like it, it would take out the 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 hatred in it per se in terms of like the physical violence of it and, and really just kind of put it your your aim on something completely different and make it that and not particularly like violence like yeah you, it's Hitler, like you, Hitler went to violence to, yeah. to do what he needed to do and it, and it was like clearly <laughs> obvious what he was trying to do Correct. hers it's a little bit more covert right it's definitely I use that like word a, it's a little more covert that's a perfect way to put it like a covert operation yeah she knew exactly what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was a supporter of, of giving IQ tests to people. She was in favor of using those IQ tests to determine who should be sterilized and who should have ch children. In a response mm. titled The Demonization of Margaret Sanger, Alexander Sanger, her grandson and president of Planned Parenthood at the time, called Mosher's editorial unfair. In the same piece, Esther Katz, director of NYU's Margaret Sanger Papers Project, claimed evidence revealing... Sanger did not rationalize her support for birth control on racist grounds, that she never advocated genocidal policies aimed at racial, ethnic, or religious groups, and that she, in fact, believed access to birth control would benefit, not eliminate minority populations. So, so what? Is it that really then, I feel like they wanted her, like, because she never just straight up came out and said, I want to get rid of, you know, the black race or the the Hispanic race. Like, she didn't say specifically. Is that why they're just trying to... Because obviously there's an underlying, you know... She's saying without saying, like, clearly, like, multiple times. If you can read between the lines. Yeah, definitely. it's like, well, so what? Was it because she just never said, I'm trying to get rid of all the black people? And... I, and I mean, based on some, some of her words and, and, you know, some of the quotes that she said... I, I get like a negative connotation from it. Like it doesn't feel like it's genuine. It doesn't feel like you're really, that's the, that's the real purpose. That's the real agenda. The real purpose for me is like he just said, using IQ tests on certain people to determine if you should be sterilized or not. Like almost kind of like playing God to a degree. Yeah. 
who are you, girl? You better sit down and be quiet. <laughs> Dr. Katz turned down our request for an interview. Although in this article, the editor as public authority interpreting Margaret Sanger, she wrote, by our current highly sensitized standards, some of her attitudes and statements can be construed as racist, elitist, ethnocentric, and not politically correct. In 1942, Margaret Sanger's American Birth Control League became Planned Parenthood, which has moved to fulfill its founders' goals, helped greatly by the Supreme Court decision in Roe versus Wade. Under the veil of secrecy and deception, 60 plus million babies have not been born because they were aborted legally since 73. One third of that population belong to the African-American community. A frightening and telling number given blacks make up only 13% of the U.S. population. Wow. Dan Gaynor of the Media Research Center. Mm. That means that there's more black people that have been aborted than there are. As far as like a Wait, census. What did she say now? She's saying basically it's like a census in regards to like 13% of the population. We account for a third of those 60 million abortions since 1973. Which, that's which, a which huge on, number. Which is a huge number. It's, it's a even more, it's, there's an even huge disparity when there's only like 13% of the population being black, but we account for 30% of total abortions. So really, our population number would be higher had we not... That 13% would be higher aborted today. 30% of the kids that should have been here. Just think about that. In regards to the American population being, uh, the American population, African Americans making up 13%, think about what it will be now. If it, it wouldn't if, be 13. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. 13% hmm. of the U.S. population. Dan Gaynor of the Media Research Center says that Sanger's true mission remains alive and well throughout today's abortion industry. Look at the maps. Yeah. See where the abortion facilities are. They are near places where people are marginalized, people are poor, people are minority, and that's their, that's their target market. Generation after generation, wow. we have built a better world for our daughters. Because of allies in the media and academia, Gaynor also points out how speech from conservatives and others about Sanger's past, Planned Parenthood practices, and abortion is often classified as hate speech. There is nothing as close to a sacrament in the media as abortion. It is, it is a holy writ that, that abortion is protected. And anybody who comes out against it, any organization, any business, anybody, the media swarm. So does social media. Facebook's new oversight board, and this is really concerning, has four co-chairs. And it's, yes, it's, they're going to be the appeals board for content. Well, one of the four oversight board is on the board of a, an abortion, pro-abortion group. There's no pro-lifers. They're not there. The problem also exists on many college campuses. I remember at Harvard, they laughed when I was talking about the history of eugenics. And they said, you know, that doesn't matter. Planned Parenthood is not like it was during Margaret Sanger's days. Those who oppose her views say not true and are committed to exposing her past for future generations. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Well, keep in mind, this is a serious matter. You're, try you're trying to revise history to suit a political agenda and suit a political argument. Uh, the source of that story, curiously, is a group called NewsGuard, and what they are, they're self-appointed watchdogs of news organizations, and obviously coming from the left. Uh, CBN News had published a series of articles on Alveda King and had quoted her accurately, uh, saying that Margaret Sanger thought that black people were human weeds. Well, he came at us for that and saying, you, you can't quote her accurately. You always have to put uh, a disclaimer that there's no evidence that Margaret Sanger ever used the term human weeds. And he, yeah, in turn, looking. quoted Esther Katz, sa who said that she had reviewed all of Margaret Sanger's papers and couldn't find any evidence that she ever used the term human weeds. Well, she knows full well about that New York Times article. And what she was saying is, well, within her papers, it's not there. But within the public record, it is there. And so there's a, a, a conscious effort 
to rewrite history and, and declare her as some kind of hero that we should all look up to and ignore uh, the, the root of Planned Parenthood, which is quite clearly eugenics. Now, you go back to the title of that New York T Times article, and it says, Creating a Race of Thoroughbreds. So it's selective breeding. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what this is all about. Wow. And within that selective breeding, you have to breed out what you think is undesirable. Mm -hmm. Well, in today's world, that is morally reprehensible. And you, you, you can't change that history. And right. you shouldn't even try to change that history. In other words, like if, it, if it's unacceptable Wait. as of today, like if people were to refer <laughs> back to that and say that what you were doing and what you were saying and all that stuff you wrote and why you made this is wrong and it was, it was wrong. Right. Like, it, just because it was back then and it was okay back then doesn't mean that it, it's still yeah. not. Yeah, but <laughs> it, just in regards to, like, the, ag is. the agenda and, and what's going on. But you, you can't, like, deny the facts. You can't yeah. really deny the truth, you know? Right, exactly. The, the truth always has to be, like, brought to the forefront and it always has to be acknowledged. I think that's very, very, like... The interesting point here is that they are trying to rewrite the history to, to make it look like it wasn't what it seemed or what it was supposed to be. But that's what I was trying to explain. It seems like because she never just came out and said, yeah, right. let's weed out the black people. Let's weed out these people. Well, she did say it. Okay, because he did say he said it, it, it publicly, right, right. the public record, but yeah. not anything that she actually wrote. Mm -hmm. So so I don't know. It's publicly there. Okay, so yeah, somewhere. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with, the pub, being, with it being public. There. Everybody, yeah. So I don't know. But why would they be trying to, I mean. Because, I mean, you see people like bolstering it up. Like every time someone comes around for like election time, you know, here comes that, 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 that question again in regards to like abortion and who's for it and who's against it. Right. And you have like these two opposing points. But every time election, election time comes along, that's always on the agenda. Just like you saw with Hillary Clinton when she was running and she actually went and spoke at a Planned Parenthood. Was a speaker there at a meeting? I just feel like it's a slap and, in the and, face and for somebody kinda, to and, get up there and, she and say that. bolstered it up. That's what I'm saying. Know, That's so. a slap in the face for somebody to say something like that, yeah. especially being that she has the history that she does. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I and, guess. And, and just think about you know, wow, like the women that are supporting Hillary, like maybe a lot of people, just people in general. But I'm just saying, people when she was running, like women that were that were like behind her with it, like they really gotta like sit back and think about this. You know, and like look at the facts. Yeah. And and then look inside yourself and, and see if your moral compass is right. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't understand this, but here at CBN News, we want to set the record straight. Here's what Margaret Sanger really believed. Yeah. It, and it's interesting because it's it is very much like Hitler and the move against the Jews. Well, eugenics was at the core of Hitler. Exactly, and and we all recognize how reprehensible that was, but because this has political attachments to it for other other issues, other things, including this issue. I mean, it, it people just refuse. Yeah. Just refuse. And, and if you if you doubt that there's some eugenics behind it. Um, just take your own survey. Uh, in my hometown, uh, when you go out and look for the Planned Parenthood, you have to drive to certain neighborhoods to find those clinics. Uh, there's a reason that they place them geographically there, uh, so that they're in walking distance. Do that same test in your hometown. And then take a look at, well, where do they geographically locate these clinics? And then you've got to start asking the question, why? why? Well, CBN is launching a new prayer initiative, and wow. part of that prayer is seeing some of this <laughs> Well, you look, you look at what's country. going on in America today, and you look at um, the drive, and, and it's a just drive for equality in America. Yes. And, you know, look at this past story. What would America look like today if 20 million African-American babies had not been aborted? Well, how far along would we be to racial equality? Uh, we've got COVID-19. Uh, there are locust swarms. There are hurricanes that are being threatened. Uh, our economy's in shambles. We're so politically divided, we can't even talk to each other. Um, let, let me underline that one. We, we can't have a conversation. We have to shout at one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to try to sh out shout one another. Wow. We need to pray. We need to have God come in and bring 
bring peace. So we have a prayer initiative, and we're asking you to join us. All we're asking is, will you stand one time a day and pray for your home, pray for your neighborhood, pray for your nation? You can do that in total isolation. You can stand in a closet in your house. Uh, you can stand in your driveway. So that, 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 that may be the end of it. Yeah, okay. that may be the end of it. Okay. Yeah, y'all. So I, I don't know what. To, this, that's this why I deep. said I'm like it's gonna it's gonna trigger some emotions out of this, especially since we just passed the the Roe versus Wade, with with all of that going on, and and you start getting into. It's important that you said that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I feel like everybody should be able to just make a choice, you know. And there's there's a lot, um, you know, that determines a person's livelihood and and their future and. For somebody to take away like the the option to to choose, mm -hmm. you know how they feel about giving birth, especially in the circumstance that they became pregnant, you know it's not always yeah. what you want <laughs> or what you ask for even in some cases. And you, if you know what I'm talking about, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know this, what this one definitely like goes very very deep because because it goes very very deep in regards like the core of of American history too. Because yeah. we're, we're talking about the turn of the century, like 1919, the 1920s, it's when, very when, sad. when a lot of these things were like put in place. Yeah. And, and 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 the lady at the end, I like what she how she how she said and how she placed it regarding like eugenics and comparing it to Hitler. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and he even like brought up, you know, he he was like, you know, go go like figure out where Planned Parenthood is and go look. You know, geographically, or you know, geographically, where but they're placed right, at. Though. And if you come to our city, you know, we know exactly where, or, or or at least where it used to be. I don't know if it's still there, but it was like right off of Camp Wisdom Road. And if you know anything about Camp Wisdom Road, you know where that road completely runs through, mm -hmm. all the way through Dallas. It runs through uh, the inner city. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I passed one the other day. Remember, I told y'all before I was on the phone with y'all. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that there was one right here. Mm -hmm. Right here. Where was that at? In in Mesquite. In Mesquite. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right when I when I was with Kaylee. Wow! And think about Mesquite. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the ge like geographically, as far as like the demographic, that's kind of over there. Right. Mm -hmm. That's very. It's, it makes you think, but I mean, yeah, that definitely gives you a lot to think about. It's very it controversial, is. and people, you know, sensitive for everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like regardless if you're a man or a woman, not everybody has some type of feeling towards. You know, abortion, Planned Parenthood. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So this was a good video, but we're gonna have to definitely continue on and, and kind of continue on this journey down, uh, like the Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger. Yeah. You know. So y'all let us know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. If y'all enjoyed this, be sure you give us a big thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. Smash the notification bell, and For if sure. ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And we're gonna see y'all in the next video, y'all. Peace and blessings. <laughs> we'll catch y'all soon. Yeah. Bye.